This is a Neuralink robot being designed to plant an electronic chip into a human brain. Electronic chips being placed inside the human brain is transitioning from science fiction to science... non? Fiction? Anyway, let's get into how this crazy crossover of technology and neuroscience could actually work to help people with neurological diseases. Firstly, some people already have bits of metal going into their brains to measure and stimulate activity. For example, an amazing piece of research from 2012 where a person with long-term full body paralysis called tetraplegia had wires implanted into their brain that allowed them to control a robotic arm and drink from a flask technology called a BCI, a brain computer interface. What's absolutely amazing, all of this equipment to achieve this was very bulky and very clunky. You can see it here in this battery pack amplifier signal processing box with cables galore. Enter Neuralink, attempting to fit all of that bulky clunky technology into a tiny chip the size of a 2p coin that can fit seamlessly and unnoticeable into your scalp with the wires descending down into your brain. But how on earth could this technology actually work? Your brain is one huge complicated electric circuit board. True, it's made up of biological cells, but these cells are specialized to conduct or help to conduct electric currents. There are two main types of cells in your brain, neurons and glial cells. Neurons look something like this. They're specialized to have these cables called axons that can be up to a meter long. The axons are able to send electrical signals around the body through a mechanism called an action potential. Glial cells act to support the function of the neurons, such as electrically insulating the axons and managing nutrients and waste. How neurons communicate with each other is really important. Where one neuron meets another neuron is called a synapse. Signals are passed across this space by chemicals called neurotransmitters, which diffuse from one neuron to the other. This causes the electrical signal to be carried forward in the next neuron. So that's how some cellular neuroscience works, but what about the brain as a whole? The brain is complicated, but there are these four divisible sections, frontal, temporal, parietal, and occipital lobes. Each lobe then has different sections which have quite distinct functions. For example, the visual cortex over here is involved in processing vision and the motor cortex over here is responsible for movement. Issues in a person's brain are often related to the section of brain which controls that specific thing. So if there's an issue with a person moving their limbs, it could be due to an electrical problem in this part of the brain, the motor cortex. Enter our brain chip, which could be placed here with hundreds of wires descending down into the motor cortex. Let's zoom in further. If small currents are then passed down these wires, called electrodes, into the motor cortex, the changing electric fields can drive nearby neurons to fire new action potentials they wouldn't otherwise be able to do. By the brain chip firing these signals with a specific timing and a precise level of power, it may be possible to mimic what a healthy brain is able to do. For example, creating an electric signal to move a limb. But why does it have to be in the brain? Isn't that a bit gross and barbaric? Actually, it's highly necessary. You could potentially measure and stimulate signals from outside the thick, dense scalp. But this is a bit like trying to communicate with a stadium full of people from outside the stadium. You could hear if they were cheering or booing, but not the specific words they're saying. You could try to shout things back at them, but to really communicate ultra efficiently, you would have to sit yourself inside the stadium, which is exactly why it's optimal for that electronic chip to sit inside the brain. Does that analogy make sense? Yeah, I think so. It's important to acknowledge that the internet is filled with people claiming that the Neuralink brain chip is going to have all of these grand features like mind reading capabilities, Wikipedia built into your brain and other very black mirror kind of things. But the initial incarnation of this technology is really a very noble and an incredibly ambitious attempt to improve the lives of people with initially paralysis and eventually all neurological disorders. It's also important to consider the ethics behind all of this. Companies like Neuralink are experimenting on pigs and monkeys and some of these animals have died in the course of their research, but they certainly aren't the first animals to die in the name of medical research aiming to prolong and improve the lives of people, so it's tricky, it's nuanced. 
But wherever you stand, this technology is starting to trickle from the impossible future to the realistic present. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.